conclusion, we say that anybody who isn't thrilled with life and full of ecstasy and happiness is a spoiled brat. Spoiled brat. So why do we say that? You imagine somebody at Hebrew University standing there and they drive up with a brand new Buick and the guy gets out of the car and he hands him the keys and he says, this is a present from your father. The guy takes a look at the Buick, he looks at the keys and he starts crying uncontrollably. Everybody's asking, what's, what's this? Is this a gift from, you know, from the, uh, from the, uh, from the dead? It's like, what, 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 what's it? maybe his father died and he left him. And, what, what's going on? Yeah, he says, I, uh, I, I wanted a Cadillac. Everybody said, what are you, spoiled brat? You know, you work a little bit, you got a Buick, thank God. You know, you work a little bit, add some money, you get a Cadillac. Well, yeah, you're complaining because you got a Buick. So, in Judaism we say that, look, every human being knows life is ultimately beautiful. But they want a little more, they want a, a Cadillac. They want a, a, life is beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's absolutely fabulous, and... Uh, well, but I also want uh, a nice house. <laughs> Life is beautiful, but I also want uh, uh, a, a good job. <laughs> Life is beautiful, fabulous. Now, how is it that we can attain happiness? Yeah, so we tell a story. See, this guy, he's in the 70th floor. Let's say you are in the 70th floor of the Empire State Building. And a fellow opens the window and he's going to jump. Will you try to stop him? Everybody says, sure, I try to stop him, you know. So the guy is eight feet tall. He weighs 500 pounds. He says, you try to stop me, you come with me. I said, please, my pleasure, you know. You have any message you want to give? You know, I'll carry your message. The guy says, I see you're a reasonable chap. You know what? I'll give you 15 minutes to try to stop me. But before you try to stop me, you've got to know why I want to jump. I said, okay, tell me. He gives you eight hours of misery. I mean, you can't even imagine the stories, the tragic tales, the rejections, the, the, the suffering. The, oh, oh. You're, you're crying your eyes out. After eight hours, he turns to you and says, you heard how much I suffered in my life. I don't want to suffer anymore. I want to make an end to it all. Now, you got 15 minutes to explain to him that he, he should suffer some more and not make an end to it all. Yeah? <laughs> Good luck. But I got an idea. What's my idea? I say to him, hey, my friend, I hear you're suffering, that's terrible. But tell me one thing. If on top of all these troubles that you had, all these troubles, and they're terrible, well, I feel for you, but on top of all of it, you were born blind. Would you be more miserable? More, you know, blind. People are laughing, they're playing, and you, can't, you don't even know what they're doing. Yeah, you're bunking into lampposts. I mean, you know, blind. It's an unpleasant state of affairs. And, top of all these troubles, you're also born blind. More miserable or less miserable? Of course more miserable. So you certainly jump. For sure I jump. So you're leaning out the window to jump. Yeah, You're leaning out the window to jump. You're ready to go. A miracle. You can see. First time in your life you can see. You see faces. You can see clouds. You can see cars. You can see birds. You can see flowers. You can see sunshine. I mean, are you going to jump just now or are you going to stick around like a uh, a couple of weeks or a couple of days at least to, to have the thrill of seeing. I'd stick around. And I said, sure, I'd stick around. Yeah. Mm. I'd stick around. Well, what about all these troubles you were telling me about? It's terrible trouble. The heck with the troubles. I can see. Ha! And you stick around. You enjoy seeing for two days, five days, a week, two weeks. You, know, you get used to it. You get used to even seeing. So you get used to it, start remembering your troubles. At the end of three weeks, boom, <laughs> you jump. So the secret of happiness, you see, is don't get used to seeing. Enjoy yourself. Oh boy, greatness is in our soul, it's in our genes. Every human being wants to be great. Now people will tell you, look, I don't, I don't mind being average. I can be average. I don't need to be great. I don't mind being average. You say to them, how would you like to be a mediocrity? <laughs> no, 
not mediocre. No, no, no. But really, we all want to be great. If you get up at bat and you hit a triple, you kick yourself while you're running around the bases, the third base, you kick yourself a little more and it would have gone over the fence. We want to be super great, everything, perfect. We want to change the world. We want to be great. The only thing that's stopping us is we also would like to sleep while we're being great. <laughs> you can't do that, you know. You got to take the pain. If you want to be a great runner, you want to win an Olympic medal, <laughs> you got to take a lot of pain. I don't know how great it is to win an Olympic medal, but it's a little bit of measure of greatness. You want to be a great um, doctor, you got to take a lot of pain. You want to be anything. Yeah, you want to be a great human being, you got to accept it takes pain. The pain of what? Know yourself. Know what you're living for. Really understand what you, what you want greatness for. What, what is greatness? Study and work and study and work and study and work. You got it made. We all have the power. Well, the very first thing, how do you tell that people are, are great is <laughs> they can't be petty. Somebody who's great can't be petty. If he, he gets annoyed because uh, there's drumming on the table or because uh, you, you didn't recognize him, or <laughs> you know, he can't be great and be petty. That's one way of telling. But another way of telling is that great people really appreciate other people's Greatness or wisdom? Really great people, really great people are appreciative of others because they, they have a feeling of, of, of being and they appreciate others' being. Yeah? But the common measure of greatness is what you accomplish. And there's a truth to it. What you accomplish? So the guy who wins a, a gold medal, you know, he's the fastest swimmer in the world. So he accomplished, he broke some records. People are impressed, but really, what did you accomplish? So now everybody knows that human beings can swim that. What, what did you accomplish? Yeah? A great quarterback led the team to the Sugar Bowl. He led him to victory. What did he accomplish? He got, it. He got a nice fat salary, and, and uh, for a while, uh, all the... Uh, Athletic uh, stuff won him for the endorsements, which is another bit of money. But there's people who made money and more money than him. So what did you accomplish? You accomplished what? The what? That's, you entertained some people. Well, that's not bad. It's not bad. Entertain some people. Yeah, that's not bad. But there's plenty of misery around. Plenty of misery around. Oh, man, a great man who made the uh, the. Uh, open heart uh, surgery possible, I think what he accomplished is a lot of people walking around because of him. They extended life. Another great man who, who uh, made the, uh, I mean, there are things to accomplish in this world. In Judaism, we say the greatest accomplishment, the greatest accomplishment is if you can teach people how to be happy. They'll break the records. They'll make new techniques to save lives. You'll save more lives by having them happy. <laughs> Wisdom is the greatest greatness. Everybody knows that one person can make all the difference in the world. And not only that, they know they are the person. The way you bring it to their attention, so that, and they don't realize that they know it, but the way you bring it to their attention is you ask them, tell me, isn't it terrible what's happening in, in Bosnia, what's happening in the Sudan, what's happening in, in India, in Pakistan? Isn't it terrible? They say, yeah, it's awful, it's terrible. Well, tell me, isn't it terrible what's happening in America? Batted babies, batted wives, drugs, murder, violence. Isn't that terrible? Absolutely, it's terrible. So what are you going to do about it? They say, me? What can I do about it? You'll never get anybody at all who will ever answer you and say, me? Why should I do something about it? <laughs> I didn't make the mess. <laughs> now, somebody spills 
you spill some ink in your some some dirt on your parlor, and a guy comes in, you say, hey, why don't you clean it up? You say, what the heck's the matter with you? I didn't do it. But here, we all know and we accept we're responsible. If we could do something about it, and we didn't, you'd be an awful human being. If you you could cure cancer, and you didn't do it because you wanted to have a nice vacation, or because you wanted to make some more money, you're a murderer. All those people. All those people, all those people are suffering. It's your fault. You could do it. So what? I, mean, I said, I can do it, but I don't, I don't feel like it. <laughs> You're responsible. You know it. I know it. And come on, do something about it. The first thing you got to do to get inner peace, we call that shalom. That's what we're blessing each other, shalom. We're not talking about the terrorists, we're not talking about the Syrians, and we're not talking about the UN. We're talking about inner peace, shalom aleichem, inner peace. So the first thing that you got to do about gaining inner peace in order to really attain it is to understand what's the conflict. Where's the conflict? Who's fighting who? So occasionally the conflict comes out in the open and you say, darn it, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, well, I go, but I told him that I shouldn't have. So I'm like, who's arguing with who? What's going on? You ever go jogging? Anybody goes jogging. I mean, the first couple of times you go jogging, there's somebody saying to you, you're an idiot. Your feet are going to fall off. Your heart is going to bust. This is crazy. You cut it out right now. You cut it out right now. Oh, I'm going to scream. <laughs> Who's there? Who's talking to you? Yeah? So you've got to understand, you see, that we have a body and we have a soul. And we are in conflict. Your soul says, I want truth, no matter what it costs. I want to do the right thing even if I had to go to hell. I want to do the right thing. I want to know reality. I don't want to dream. I want to accomplish. I want to save the world. The body says, yeah, 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 shut up, shut up. Leave me alone. What do you have? <laughs> I want to sleep. <laughs> I want to be comfortable. I want <laughs> You got it? That's the body. The body wants to eat, satiation, comfort. The soul wants accomplishments. Understanding, reality, meaning. What is the body going to do with meaning? <laughs> it's not interested. So this is a steady conflict. I'll tell you, I'll teach you how to be happy. You say, that's a great idea. Yeah, but I don't have time now. Why, why don't you have time? I mean, happiness, you know, happiness. Yeah, the body says, get the heck out of here. This is going to change your life. You don't want change. You want comfort, even if it's misery. <laughs> you have to be depressed. You ever meet a depressed guy? He's really comfortable. They say, come on out, it's a beautiful day. We'll go fishing. You enjoy fishing. You're going to be thrilled. He says, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow. Why not? You're going to enjoy it. Not now, please. I'm comfortable. <laughs> Miserable. <laughs> so this is the conflict. If you know that conflict, then you go, take the pain, keep on running, talk to your body, tell the body, and you can fool the body, like the body fools you. You say, just until that tree, until the next tree, just five minutes more of study, just another five minutes. Don't, don't confront him too big, you know, he's a tough guy. You say, another two minutes of, of studying, what will harm you, you big bully? Okay. <laughs> then he forgets about it, just like, you know, you say, five more minutes of television, and that's it. I mean, did you ever say that one? <laughs> he fooled you. <laughs> Fool him back. <laughs> the fundamental difference between the person who does the right thing and the evil person <laughs> is who's in charge, the body or the soul. Everybody wants to be good. Everybody wants truth. Everybody, but everybody wants to be happy. And you say, come on, I'll teach you how to be happy. Who's in charge? If the body's in charge, it says tomorrow, not now. You can't. You're, uh, w will you stop being a squirt? It won't work anyway, yeah? And he drowns you out, and you're miserable. You're a nice bad man, yeah? 
If your soul is in charge, I want to be happy. Shut up, you dumb body. Yeah. All you do is threaten me. You don't got no power whatsoever. I'll listen. I'll work at it. If it works, it's good. If it's not, I'll throw it out. That's a nice, reasonable attitude. Yeah. Now that makes you a good man. Doing what the body wants makes you evil. The evil people really also want to be good. It's just they can't stand up to their body. A good person is a person who is seeking meaning, who is seeking reality, and doesn't compromise. That's the definition of good. He wants to know, how does he know? He doesn't assume that he's the good person, but if he tries to figure out why, why, do they, why do they say differently, what is it, where do mistakes come? He, he's aware that people are evil and think they're good. Every human being is aware of that. Yeah? So a good person says to himself, so how can I be sure that I'm really good? <laughs> a wise person understands that <laughs> he's got an awful lot to learn. The fool thinks he has an awful lot that he knows. <laughs> The most meaningful thing a human being can do in this world is to bring peace to humanity, which means an inner peace. To wake people up that don't just go along with your society. We've got to wake up people to the fact that everybody is being brainwashed. All these suicide bombers are being brainwashed. All the terrorists are being brainwashed. Well, all Americans are brainwashed. All Indians are brainwashed. All Jews are brainwashed. Everybody's brainwashed. You got to wake up and think for yourself. And that's your job. You got to point out to people, hey, look, if you were born in India, <laughs> you'd be waving a holy cows. And if you were born in Iran, you'd say, the great Satan. You're an American. Big deal. How do you know you're right? Find out. Investigate. Wake up. Live. Otherwise, you can't really fight those guys who are sure that you're the Satan. First, he should figure out what in the world he's living for, yeah? That's the first thing that he should figure out, because that certainly has a lot to do with what profession he's going he's gonna to make. But the second thing is that, look, uh, the Almighty gave us talents and he gave us desires. Now, you're not living to work. Don't identify with your work. The point of your life isn't ever going to be to be a lawyer, even if you like the business. I mean, you don't, you're not going to get into a closet and wait there until they say a brief, a brief, and out you come, I'm here ready to give a brief. I mean, that's not, you're not, you're not living to be a doctor, lawyer, or Indian chief. You're living to live. You've got to decide what that is. But you're working in order to have the wherewithal to do what you're living for. So... It depends. If you're living to change the world, then you go into business because you need a lot of money. <laughs> if you're living to, uh, to be a poet, so you should go into uh, be a librarian. You have a lot of time. If you're living to, uh, to uh, just to, you need a living and look at what your talents are and choose what you like that takes the least time to give you the most time to do what you're really living for. Every man can change the whole world, yeah? The world, <laughs> the world was created for every single human being. We are all on point. Now, what, a, what, what an opportunity for individual <laughs> expression, you know, every human being wants to straighten out this world. No more war, no more hate, no more terrorism, no more battered babies, no more battered wives. We all know that this is stinks, it's rotten, it's, it's bad, it's bad. We don't want our children in that world. You know? Well, you got to do something about it.
you ever see the, um, the tracks in the back of a computer? Why do they need so many of those little connections and the little, little connections? What do they need it for? Why do you need all these, uh, these keys and, and controls? What do they need it for? Why not have one, two, three, and you go bang them on them? <laughs> you know, life is complicated. It's complicated. You've got to know how to, how to deal with it. You know life is complicated. You need some rules. You need some instruction. You need some insights. You need some appreciations. Eh? That's why you came to give us. Torah is wisdom, the wisdom of life. Is wisdom for everyone? Of course wisdom is for everyone. What is it that you don't want to learn? You don't want to learn what free will is, or how to be happy, or how to stay married, or uh, how to change the world, <laughs> how to use your potential. This is, wisdom is for everyone. to take some subject. You, you tell, don't tell me you're not interested in what's the nature of pleasure. Or don't tell me you're not interested in what's free will. I mean, it's you. It's free will. Don't tell me you're not interested in what's the evidence of God's existence. Don't, I mean, there are things you're interested in, yeah? So start with that. <laughs> Shabbat. It's a celebration of life. Shabbat is when you live. Six days you got to work. One day, what are you living for? Live it. The one day, live for what you're living for. What are you living for? That one day, that Shabbat, no more work, start living. While you're still on this earth, don't wait until you get to heaven. mind is so powerful, is you know, infinitely powerful, to use drugs, which is in a, in a sense, it's, uh, you're, you're interfering with your, your, uh, with your ability to control, is a stupid mistake. Stay away from it. Just learn how to use that, that, that powerful mind you got. It's a, it's, uh, there's, not, there's nothing that, that can compare to a mind. Use it.